Okay, Assalamu alaikum and a very good morning to everybody. I hope that you are doing very well today. Okay, so I would like to first of all welcome you to Tavis. Okay, um, first of all, uh, I see that I have a few of you here. Okay, and later on, we will do a bit of uh, self introduction. Okay. Uh, all right, so I would like to welcome everybody too for our intensive SPM course. Now, this is a 10-day course and we will be providing you with comprehensive teaching and guiding you to have and to score uh, a really, really high on your SPM. All right, so let's introduce myself first. Okay, so I am teacher Hosna, so please address me as Miss Hosna, and I am specifically will be teaching you English. As you all know, SPM code paper is triple one nine. Okay, so this is your SPM English code for uh, your paper. Okay, so triple one nine. Okay, so for today, I will be teaching you one skills, okay, one skill. As you all know that English has four skills, right? So four skills and they are uh, reading, they are writing, uh, we also have listening and speaking. So for today, I will only focus on one skill and only for one part for this particular paper. All right, because I do not want to let everybody be confused with how and, and what to do with each part of the papers that you will be doing later on for your SPM. All right. So um, I would like to get to know uh, my student, Okay, since I've already introduced myself. So can I please hear you talk? And introduce yourself, please. Who do I have here today? Okay, maybe you'll probably be shy. Okay, never mind. We'll get to know each other later on. Okay? So, first of all, why do you think that you have to sit for four papers? Why? Why do we have to sit for four papers? For English especially. Okay. So, like I said before, we have four different skills, four different language skills. We have reading, writing, listening, and speaking. Right? So, each of us will have different capabilities of, of doing these uh, skills. Right? So, maybe you are good at writing. Maybe your friend is good at reading or maybe your other friend is good at listening and speaking, right? So you see that when you enter college or when you enter university later on, you have to sit for another test, which is called MUET, right? So this MUET is actually a, a paper where you are to sit for. And there are four uh, skills as well. So it's similar to what you are doing now for your SPM. All right. And you are lucky enough that you are actually doing this. You are actually uh, applying this already uh, during your school time. And fret not. Okay. I will teach you. I will guide you on how to do and how to attempt this paper, how to score this paper. All right. So let's move on. Okay, our paper for today is reading and use of English. And like I said, I will only focus on part one for today. All right, and I will brief you on that here. Okay, so I will provide you an overview of uh, SPM English new format. 
and I will also provide you tips and strategies as well on how to tackle part one questions. And I will also uh, allow you to apply reading techniques when answering part one questions. Hello? Uh, Sim Sun? Hi. Okay, thank you. I was uh, I I was thinking of um you know try to mute yourself. Okay. All right. So these are the aims that we are going to be heading for today. All right. Any questions so far? Any questions so far? If you are not a person who doesn't really like to talk, maybe you can type in the room chat. You can you can type in the room chat for everyone. Okay, okay. I believe that you do not have any questions. All right. So I'm going to move on to the next part. Okay. So I'll brief you on the breakdown for your English exam paper. So first paper, you will have reading and use of English. This is your paper one and it's divided. Okay, yeah. it's divided with the 25%. Right, 25% for each paper. Uh, Actually, Austin, today is a school day and they're gonna have an exam tomorrow, SPM exam. <laughs> Uh, sorry, uh, so okay, okay, sorry. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, sorry for sorry for that. All right, so uh, as I mentioned before, the weightage for each paper is twenty five percent, but each paper will cost you different marks. As you can see, as you can see that for your paper one this is 40 marks for your paper two writing this is 60 marks and for speaking 24 marks and for listening will be 30 marks and again with the time it varies as well you have your paper one for one hour and 30 minutes for writing as well one hour and 30 minutes and for speaking only 13 minutes only 13 minutes so I know it's quite short, but we'll try and practice it together here. Okay, so do not worry too much for your speaking. Okay, I always like to encourage my students to speak. So please speak with me. Okay, and then you will have your listening paper for 40 minutes. Okay, so these are the four papers that you will be sitting for your SPM English exam. All right. Now, let's move on to the next one. I will brief you on the CEFR grading. Okay, so as you all know, there are six levels. Okay, there are six levels for the um, grading. Okay, CEFR grading or CEFR grading. And for A1 and A2, this is considered for beginners only. This is for A1, you are able to say and understand a few things in English. And for A2, this is where you are able to communicate in simple sentences and understand few, uh, few kind of familiar situations like, you know, everyday things that you do or your daily chores. You know, these are the things that, that you understand. Okay, so if I ask you, okay, what's, um, what's your name? And if you can reply me, okay, I'm this. Okay. I know that you are at this level. But if I ask you another question, like where do you stay? Okay, where do you stay? Maybe uh, for A1, you can say uh, I stay at Sha'alam. But for A2, a little bit more, maybe you can say uh, I am staying with my parents in Sha'alam. Right? So you can see the difference there. Okay. So for the next level, which is B1 and B2, this is intermediate level. So under intermediate level, you are able to make simple sentences and understand uh, briefly about the whole conversation. You can also describe some familiar situations as well, some, some situations that you are 
that you that you recognize that you can remember so this is a b1 level and at b2 where you are able to speak and explain clearly fluently and spontaneously with details all right so if i do ask you a, a question like uh what did you do last weekend all right what did you do last weekend so if you are able to explain to me what did you do and if you are able to think of of some uh, maybe some good vocabs right some good vocabs that will be great as well so you are considered a b2 sorry you are at b2 level but if you are a C1 and C2, this is considered at an advanced level. So C1 is where you are able to speak fluently, understand and recognize implicit meaning. So what is implicit meaning? Anybody? What is implicit meaning? The opposite is explicit. So X is like, you know, like the word exit it's outside right so this one is implicit so in it's considered like inside right so inside meaning okay so this is where you understand the meaning of some indirect words okay so if you understand if you can speak fluently then you are a c1 person i can say for example like if I ask you, okay, what do you like? So if you say, if you only respond to me, uh, for example, I like, I like nasi goreng, right? I like nasi goreng. But if you want to improve more with your vocabulary, you can always say, I prefer, right? I prefer nasi goreng. But instead of the word nasi goreng, you can, Put it into English. I prefer fried rice, right? So you can see the vocab here is different already. Okay. Again, same goes with C two. Now C two here. This is more of of like a native speaker. Okay. So this, this, this is very close to a native speaker speaking. All right. So if you are someone uh, who stays abroad and if you can speak like the natives, then you are you are at C2 level. OK, so you can actually able to speak fluently and precisely and also to understand and able to express finer shades of meaning in more complex situations. So again, if let's say I ask you a very simple situation, like, for example, what did you do in the weekend? So you try and not to tell me I did this, I did that, right? It's it's not like a story. Can you try and summarize one thing in that one sentence? And you are considered a C2 uh, person already. Okay. I hope you can understand about these levels. Okay. So I'm going to move on to uh, tell you a little bit uh, of the plan of the 10 day plan that we are going to be doing for English. OK. All right. So in the first four lessons, OK, in the first four lessons, you will be doing only paper one. OK, as you can see that we are going to be doing paper one only. So for today, we are going to look at part one. And for lesson two, we are going to look at rational clothes. And we are going to be specifically focusing on the parts of speech as well. And then for lesson three, we'll be doing comprehension. That's part three. And then for lesson four, we'll be doing uh, gap text and also information transfer. So there are five parts, right, for paper one. So these are the things that we're going to be covering for the four lessons, the first four lessons, okay? And then for the next three lessons, we'll be doing on paper two writing. So underwriting, there are three parts and I have break it down to, okay, lesson five, we'll be doing on email. Lesson six, we'll be doing 
uh, a bit on the essay and also story writing. And lastly, we'll do a bit on the review report and also article as well. Okay, so you won't miss anything out for writing. Okay, am I going too fast or, or am I okay? I hope I'm okay. All right. So moving on to the next one. Okay, the other three lessons. Lesson eight will be doing speaking, and lesson nine will be doing uh, listening, and together with lesson ten, we'll be doing listening as well. Okay, so listening. There are four parts, and I specifically uh, break it down into part one and part two for lesson nine, and part three and part four in lesson ten. Okay. I hope there are no questions from you. Okay, if you're shy, you can always write in the room chat. I don't mind. Okay, so I'll just be moving on to the next part, which is the paper one. Okay, so paper one, this is your code, triple one nine slash one. This is your paper one code for English. It's triple one nine slash one. All right. And this is reading and use of English. And this particular paper has five parts. So these are the five parts. So you will have short text. You will have rational close, reading comprehension, gap text, and also information transfer. And out of this, added up to 40 marks okay so remember the weightage for this paper is 25 percent and the marks the sorry the overall marks is 40 marks okay so you need to score really well on this part as well because if you're just going to just shoot whichever that you think the answer is it can be you know, there is a possibility or you know, 50 50 chance that you might get it right, but some maybe you get it wrong. Okay, so I will be focusing on the first part first, which is the short text. All right, so again, let's move on to this. Okay, just a simple introduction. So, part one short text. There are eight multiple choice questions of short text. Okay, so you'll be given options of A, B, and C. And this part particularly focus on your understanding of information. So from the short text given, you will have some information given to you. So you need to understand, you need to try and read and, and go in depth. You know, what does it really want you to answer. Okay, so you need to understand the information, then only you can start answering the question. But I will teach you on also how to, how to tackle, okay, how to tackle part one questions. Okay, and you got to make sure that paper one is one hour and 30 minutes, okay, which equivalents to uh, 90 minutes, right? So 90 minute paper, with five parts. So I would particularly like you to spend 10 minutes only. So make sure you got your watch with you. You got your watch with you and then watch yourself. Keep an eye on your watch and see that, okay, I have to spend only 10 minutes for this part. If you spend more, then you won't catch up with the next ones. Okay, so I hope that you can try to manage your time really well for particularly part one. Although it's very simple, some of you say, Ala, you know, very easy, uh, very easy. But although it's easy, sometimes the information given in the short text mm, may not seem like what you think it is. Okay, so please be careful on your timing only. 10 minutes for this part one. All right. So moving on to the next one. Okay. The tips and strategies. Okay. This, uh, this is one of my tips 
I like to use acronyms. Okay, this is my acronym here. It's R2KE. Now, what do you think it stands for? Hmm. It looks like rake. It looks like a plate number also, right? Okay, so I'll tell you that later. So first of all, the first tip. Okay, the first tip is read the instructions carefully. Okay, read the instructions carefully. So you can see that the word instructions is highlighted, right? Instructions. Okay, so instructions carefully. And then thoroughly, not through, uh, this is not through, okay? Thoroughly, thoroughly understand the aim of the question asked. So I'm going to highlight this, aim. Aim of the question asked. Okay, you have to know what does it want you to answer. You have to ask yourself that too. Okay, what does it want me to answer? Mm, you know, so think about it thoroughly. Think about it in depth. You know, what does it want me to do? Okay, and then always reread the short text given to get the general idea. Always reread. So you have to read, you have to read it twice. Or you can read it multiple times, I don't mind, but try to read it twice, twice is, if possible, sorry. Try to read it twice if possible. So the first time you read it at a glance, and then the second time you look at the questions and then see. Okay, oh, okay. And then you can do another reading again. Okay, I don't mind how many times, but as long as you don't exceed the 10 minute mark. Okay, and then look for keywords. Look for keywords that showed up in the text. So you will see that the keywords can either be synonyms, can either be antonyms, or they can also be examples as well. Okay, and some of it may be a bit tricky, may be a bit tricky, but you have to try, like I said, reread always read it again okay do not skip reading please it's essential for you okay this is an essential skill you have to read okay and then you got to make sure as well if you have uh if you have given like tables or charts question Right, make sure that you look at the whole table or the whole chart um, clearly. Okay, please look at it clearly and then you try and analyze the information given. All right, so you have to look at it very, very clearly on this part. All right, and then when it comes to the last part, Okay, once you have got the idea, once you have read the question, you have read the instructions, you have you already know the answer. And what you can do is use the process of elimination. Use the process of elimination. What is elimination? What is elimination? You eliminate. What is eliminate? You try and remove, cross out. Right, you try and remove the wrong answers, not the right answer. Huh? Please don't remove the right answer. Please remove the wrong answers. Okay, because you only need to answer one letter only. It's either A, B, or C. Right. So if you remove, if you remove, right, if you remove two wrong answers, then you will leave out with a chance, maybe around what ninety percent correct. Right, ninety percent correct. Okay, so use the process of elimination. So this is what R2KE stands for. Read twice. Okay, read twice. And then this keyword, and this is elimination or eliminate. Okay, so you have to read it twice and then look for keywords and eliminate. Okay. So this is one of the techniques that I use 
since I was in high school also, even right now, I've been using this. Okay, I try and read once and then I'll look at the questions and then I read it again and I will look at uh, I will look for keywords and then I will eliminate. Okay, so try and use this uh, technique. Okay, R2KE. All right, so far is everyone clear about this? If you are shy, if you are shy, you can always type in the room chat. Yay or nay? I hope it's yay. I hope it's yay. Okay. I hope it's yay. Okay. I'm going to move on. <laughs> okay. The best tip ever. The best, the best of all. The best of all is always attempt the easiest one first. Okay. Always try and look at the questions very quickly. Very quickly. And look for the easiest one. If you think that that is the easiest, go right ahead. Maybe you you can do it in half a minute, right? 30 seconds, done, finish. Okay, done. Move on. Okay, let's do the next question. Okay, I think this one is easy. Okay, go right ahead. Much better this way. Rather than focusing on, okay, question one, what does it want me to do? Huh? Mm, and, you know, you can see that you start to waste time there. Okay, so please do not do that. Do not waste time. Like I said, focus only 10 minutes for this particular part. Okay, so if you start with the easiest one, maybe you cut short with the one minute, maybe 30 seconds. And then the next one, another 30 seconds. Maybe you can finish part one in five minutes. You never know. All right, so that is a, a good thing for you because you can move right ahead to the next part. Okay, so... Um, the next part is we are going to look at a few sample questions and we are going to go through it together. I hope that everybody is, um, is up, is already like up, up. Okay. So here is the first sample. Okay. So you will be given Okay, for this part one, you'll be given either a notice, you'll be given either an advertisement, you will be given either um, like, um, I don't know, some sort of pie chart, you know, you'll be given a variety uh, kind of text. Okay, so first one, we'll see that this is a notice. Okay, so here is just a sample. Okay, now next is where we are going to identify. Okay, just imagine this is like your SPM paper already. So we're going to go through it very quickly on this part. Okay, this is just a sample. Okay, so here is how you can identify the idea. Okay, so how can you do it? So here I would like you to try use the skimming and scanning techniques. Okay, so skimming and scanning techniques. Now, does anyone here know what is skimming and scanning technique? Is it something that related to the photocopy machine scanning? I uh, know, not exactly that. What is skimming? Is it like skim milk? No, definitely not. Nothing to do with milk, nothing to do with photocopy machine, nothing at all. Okay, so for skimming is actually where you read the text or you read the information very quickly. Okay, just to get the general idea of the whole text or, or the whole information given. So as you can see here, you know, just read very quickly, just to get, you know, an understanding. What is this about? You know? What is this notice about? Okay, try and read very quickly, maybe around 10 seconds. And then when you are to do scanning, when you are to do scanning, this is where you are required to find specific information. Okay, how do you do that? This is where you have to read the question. You have to read together with the question. So read the question. It's asking you to find which of the following is true about the notice? So you got to find what is true about the notice. And then only 
you have to know you have to use scanning so scan a laptop bag is counted as cabin baggage or the free baggage allowance is reduced for some passengers or the free baggage allowance for business class passengers is increased so you are what you are doing right now is scanning so you are scanning for where can you look for the answers all right now some of the answers may not be as as what is given here maybe the word choice the word choice maybe is a synonym or maybe it's an antonym okay like i said the keyword there the keyword there may be a synonym maybe an antonym or maybe examples so in this case you have to really see you have to really see which one is which for the right one lah, for you have to find the right answer okay but if you think that uh i cannot i cannot find any answer what you can do is you can make inference you can infer in fear not fear not fear like scared no nothing to do with that you can guess what it is you can try and guess and read um, i think this one is correct um, okay i think this one is correct so if you think if you say you think this one is correct you are making a 50 50 chance all right but make sure that you know that is the correct answer okay don't just think that i think this is the right one no you cannot do that okay please do not do that okay although you are making a guess you are making an inference please do not do that make sure you come back again if you have an extra time make sure that you come back to the question that you are stuck with okay so let's begin let's begin by trying out this first question together going through see it? sorry Nora Ayn um I don't quite understand your question here can you please um can you please rephrase your question okay all right so let's try and do it together which of the following is true about the notice okay so first of all read it on your own okay read it on your own read it very quickly try and and think of what the notice is about so what do you think the notice is about can somebody tell me what is the notice about okay okay i'm expecting to at least someone give me an answer all right but never mind okay so this notice is actually about new baggage allowance okay the new baggage allowance is all about baggage allowance here okay so here and then try and read the question so which of, which of the following is true about the notice a a laptop bag is counted as cabin baggage the free baggage allowance is reduced for some passengers or is it the free baggage allowance for business class passengers is increased okay now you first of all try and, and identify the keywords okay try and identify the keywords so here the question is asking you about which is true okay which of the following is true okay so here it says the keyword here laptop bag cabin as cabin baggage sorry as cabin baggage and the next one for b free baggage allowance is reduced is reduced for some passengers or 
Here, the free baggage allowance for business class passengers, business class passengers is increased. All right. So now we got to look at it in the information given. So try and find where is the laptop bag? Where is it? Where is it? So what you are doing now is scanning. Okay, you are trying to scan. Where is laptop bag? Where is it? Okay, it's at the bottom here. So laptop bag. All right. And it is counted as cabin baggage. Okay, now here, cabin baggage. So let's try and have a read at the whole sentence. So cabin baggage does not include a handbag or laptop bag. Hmm. Does not include. So that's your that's your clue. That's your clue, I would say. Okay. Does not include. Okay. Does not include a handbag or laptop bag. So definitely the answer for A is the answer for A is wrong correct it does not it does not include so a laptop bag here is not counted as cabin baggage definitely not so a is already out all right so we are doing the process of elimination so we are eliminating a already so now the chances that we have here 50 50 is either b or c all right it's either b or c hmm. So let's move on to the next one though. So the free baggage allowance is reduced for some passengers. Hmm. Free baggage allowance. Where is the word free baggage allowance? Can you find it? Where is it? Okay. So it is here. Right. So you can see free. Okay. So you can see free check-in baggage allowance. Okay is reduce can you find the word reduce can you find the word reduce mm, not really so don't waste time let's skip and move on to option c so the free baggage allowance for business class passengers is increased so right now we have already allocated the free baggage allowance here so right now let's locate business class passengers where is it business class passengers so it's actually right over here the baggage allowance for sorry 40 kilograms okay business class passengers okay is increased okay now like i said your keyword here is increase and it can also be a synonym it can also be an antonym as well now you have to see the whole sentence. So here it says, remains unchanged until further notice. Remains unchanged until further notice. So unchanged, what is unchanged? Unchanged, change is the opposite. Unchanged, no difference at all. So when there is no difference, it does not mean it's increased, right? Right? So if let's say this one is unchanged and this one is increased. So is it on the same level? Is it on the same level? No, I don't think so. So definitely C is, definitely C is, is the wrong answer. So now you are left with, B. But how are you sure B is correct? How are you sure B is correct? Because of whatever that you are doing, you have been highlighting, right? You have been highlighting the keywords already. So now we read it again. We read it again. 
So which of the following is true about the notice? So now we know a laptop bag is counted as carrying baggage. No, definitely it's not true. Right? And then for C, okay, we read the wrong answers first. Eh? The free baggage allowance for business class passengers is increased. But here it stated that it remains unchanged. So definitely the answer is wrong. So now we know that the answer is the answer is B. So well done to those of you who got it correct. Okay. Now who's up for one more? I hope you're up for one more. <laughs> okay. We'll look at the next one. So this is another notice. Okay. This is another notice. Okay, we'll try and look at it very quickly. Okay, now let's identify. So right now, let's identify together. Okay. Okay. So what do you think the information is about or the notice is about? Right, what do you think it's about? Okay, don't take too much time on your reading, please. Okay, so what do you think it's about? It's about computer. It's about computer lab will be closed for repair work. Okay, that's all that you need to know. Okay, so computer lab, uh, will be closed for repair work. So it will be closed. Okay, so now we move on to the question. So the notice uh, to staff says that A, the office will be shut for repair work or the computer laboratory will be unavailable for a fortnight or teachers have two more weeks to submit the students marks okay now which one would be the correct answer which one would it be okay let's try and look for keywords okay so the office will be shut for repair work no it will be shut for repair work so the clue or the keyword here is office shut for repair work Okay, so move on to B. The computer laboratory will be unavailable for a fortnight. The computer laboratory unavailable fortnight. What is fortnight? What is fortnight, guys? What is fortnight? Hmm? It's just a simpler term for two weeks okay a simpler term for two weeks okay so two weeks so next one c teachers have two more weeks to submit the students marks so here another keyword teachers have two more weeks to submit okay we'll just take it there okay two more weeks to submit to submit okay fine Okay, we'll take marks. Okay, you just have two more ways to submit the student's mark. Okay, now let's try and, and look at the information given. So you now we have to identify, you now the office will be shut for repair work. Where does it say the office? Where is your keyword here, office? Any, anywhere? Can you find it anywhere? Can you find it anywhere? No, I don't think so, okay? We do not have the word office. We have the office will be shut for repair work. Here is stated the computer lab will be closed. So closed and shut is a synonym, okay? So closed, closed and shut is a synonym, okay? Will be closed or will be shut for repair work, okay? Right, so definitely the answer for A is wrong. It's not the office that is closed or the, it's not the office that is shut. 
is actually the computer lab. So A is wrong already. Okay, now we look at B. So what is B? What is B? The computer lab will be unavailable for a fortnight. Okay, so here it says the computer lab will be closed for repair work when it's, a, it's on 2nd June 2021 from 7 a.m. until 5 p.m. Now, does it say two weeks? Does it say two weeks here? The duration of the closure? Does it say that? Does it say that? No. It only says, <laughs> it only says 2nd June, one day. It's only closed for one day from 7 a.m. until 5 p.m. only. It's only closed for one day. So, what do we have? It's wrong, right? It's wrong, definitely, because it's it's available on the third June onwards, and and B says a fortnight. A fortnight, like I said, is two weeks, right? A simpler term for fortnight is two weeks. Okay. Uh, sorry, a simpler form for two weeks is fortnight, sorry, okay? So now we have with C, right? Teachers have two more weeks to summer. Are you sure? Are we really sure that C is the correct answer? Let's try and identify together. Okay, teachers have two more weeks. So here it says all staffs are allowed to use the computers in the office for any clerical work during this period, okay? So now we know staff can use the computers in the office for any clerical work during this period, only on the second June. So please note that the final submission date of students' marks for the midterm examinations has been extended by a fortnight. So you can see two more weeks, okay, two more weeks, and then here has been extended by a fortnight. Right? Extended by a fortnight. And like I said, fortnight is equivalent to two weeks. So we can summarize that. Teachers will have two more weeks to submit the student's mark. Clear, everybody? Okay, I hope that you are clear with this. Okay, so the correct answer would be C. Okay, as easy as A, B, C. I hope so, as easy as A, B, C. Okay. Um, would you like to go on and try the next question? Okay, I hope that you are okay so far. Okay, so let's try the next question. This is a dialogue. Okay, let's try a dialogue. Okay, so this is a dialogue. Okay, a sample. Okay, let's try and identify together. Okay. Now, you can see that this dialogue, you can see that this dialogue is between two uh, persons or two people. Okay, two persons or two people. So it's between Nick and Julie. So it's between Nick and Julie. Okay. All right, so if you can spend around, what, 10 seconds just to read it very quickly. Okay, da, 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 da. okay. So now we know that the conversation is actually about watching a movie, right? Watching a movie. Is it watching a movie? Yes. Well, how, how do I know? The movie starts in five minutes. Okay, the movie starts and then you can see that I'll get snacks, okay? And the advert usually takes 10 minutes away. So roughly we can see that they are going to the cinema to watch a movie, okay? And they are, they are late, I would say. So which of the following statements is true? Okay, let's try and identify now. Uh, sorry, number one pull up. Sorry, A. Julie and Nick are both affected by the traffic. Are they both affected by the traffic? 
are they? Okay. Okay, let's try and find out together later. Okay, here I just highlight the keywords first. Okay, Julie and Nick are both affected by the traffic. Next, for B, Julie will get the tickets. Will get tickets while waiting for Nick. And C, Julie and Nick, Julie and Nick decide to watch watch a later movie okay let's try and find out in the information given here so julie and nick are both affected by the traffic hmm. okay where can we find that so here this one this is this one is julie okay the white one here the white is julie the grayish kind this one is nick all right, so Nick, I'm already here. Sorry, Julie, give me 10 minutes. Traffic is terrible. All right, so give me 10 minutes. Traffic is terrible. So like I said, this is Nick, okay? This is Nick speaking, so traffic is terrible. Give me 10 minutes. He says to give her, to give Julie 10 minutes. Hmm. And then, what Julie says, I know, I already, I'm oh, sorry, I know, I only got here five minutes ago. So Julie is mentioning that she just got there five minutes ago. So are they both affected by the traffic? Maybe, maybe, okay? We'll, we'll keep that in mind, maybe. Okay, let's try B. Julie will get the tickets while waiting for Nick. Okay, so here, why don't you go in first? You have your ticket, right? Or we catch the next show? It's fine, I'll get snacks. The advert usually takes 10 minutes. So anyway, hmm, does it say that Judy will get the tickets? I don't see any clue stating that Judy will get the tickets. All right, so definitely we'll cross this out. B is wrong. Okay, now see, Julie and Nick decide to watch a later movie. They decide to watch a later movie. Mm. So here we can see that, okay, or we catch the next show. It's fine, I'll get this next. The adverts usually takes, right? 10 minutes anyway so the advert usually takes 10 minutes so are they going to watch a later movie no i don't think so okay there is no clue saying that they are going to watch a later movie so definitely uh, we'll cross this out c is wrong because they're not saying that they are going to watch a later movie because here it says I'll get snacks right Julie will uh, Julie is actually saying that she will get snacks and the adverts will keep on playing for the next 10 minutes so now we know that the answer is A okay so if you got A well done to you why a why a why a miss why okay because uh we already highlighted we already highlighted here give me 10 minutes traffic is terrible so you can see that nick is late for 10 minutes and julie is late as well so she just got here five minutes ago okay so now we know that they are both affected by the traffic. Okay, now um, before uh, before we move on to the next question, okay, next question. Now, has anybody got any question to ask? Any question? So far, so far, how are you all doing? No? 
Okay, how about the others? Are you all doing okay? Okay, okay. All right, so last question. Okay, last question. Okay, last question before we take a break, eh? Okay, last question before we take a break, everybody. Okay, last question. So this is an advertisement. This is an advertisement. Okay, you'll be given a question something like this. All right, now let's move on to identifying. Let's identify together. Okay, so here... Okay, try and have a read about 10 seconds. No, skim very quickly, quickly, quickly. Skim. Da, 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 da. Okay. 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 I hope that I hope that you can read very quickly. Okay, don't read word by word. Just get the gist. Okay, just get the general idea only. So what is it about? It's about hotel. Receptionist. Okay, it's about finding a hotel receptionist for Blue Valley hotels. Okay, for Blue uh, Valley hotels. So they are, they are, <laughs> they are um, hiring a hotel receptionist. Oh, Ayn has done her her job already. Or oh, B. Okay, we'll see. We'll see if the answer is B. Okay, so let's identify together. So which of the following statements is true? Now, which of the following is true, everybody? So A uh, says you will have the opportunity to work overseas. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, let's try and um, underline or you can highlight. Okay, opportunity to work overseas. Hmm. Does it say anything about overseas work? Okay, we'll see about it. Now, B, there are job vacancies in various locations in Malaysia. Okay, job vacancies, various locations in Malaysia. Okay, C, candidates without any work experience can apply for the job. Candidates without, without work experience can apply for the job. Can apply for the job. What job? Hotel receptionist. Okay. Now, we'll try and see one by one. Okay. Now, A, you will have the opportunity to work overseas. Now, where does it say? Where does it say overseas? Can you find it? Okay. So, let's read. Okay. Due to our continuous growth, we are expanding our Blue Valley hotels to other major cities in Malaysia, including Pulau Pinang, Ipoh, and Johor Bahru. Is that overseas? Everybody, is that overseas? Pulau Pinang, Ipoh, and Johor Bahru? Definitely are not. I wouldn't say overstate. Boleh lah. I, I would say state, okay, but not overseas. No, definitely not. It's still Malaysia. Yes, it's still Malaysia. Okay, so now we know that you are not given the opportunity to work overseas. So A is wrong. Okay, so A is wrong. Okay, you only, you only can work here. Pulau Pinang, Ipoh and Johor Bahru. They are not overseas. Okay, there are job vacancies in various locations in Malaysia. Hmm, is it? Is it? Maybe. Okay, Ayn says yes. Okay, good. Okay, I have two best students now. <laughs> okay, now let's try see. Candidates without any work experience can apply for the job. Hmm, let's try and see here. Uh, requirements so they have a uh, few requirements so they have this SPM qualifications and minimum two years work experience hmm so here your clue says two years work experience but C says candidates without 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 so without, so definitely, definitely 
No. Right? Definitely. No. So C is wrong already. See? As easy as pi. No. Pi is hard to make, but yeah. Okay? So definitely the answer is B. Okay? They are... There are job vacancies available at various locations where we can see it's here. Pulau Pinang, Ipoh and Johor Baru. They are all in Malaysia. All right? They are all in Malaysia. And they are uh, opening up a few positions. Uh, sorry, only one position but in a few. In a few other major cities in Malaysia. Okay? Now... I would like to take a break for about five minutes, everybody. Okay. And um, I would like you all to enjoy a hot Milo or hot coffee while you are on break. Okay. Please do not play games. Huh? Five minutes only, everybody. So I'll see you back here. Bye. All right, so welcome back, everybody. I hope you had a nice cup of Milo or coffee. Yes? No? Okay, uh, before we begin with the next session, I would like to get to know a few of you. <clears throat> Maybe you could um, like briefly introduce Introduce yourself. I already allow you to speak. So just tell me your name and where do you stay? Oh, so cute. Okay. Oh. You are very enthusiastic. Very shy. Okay, please don't be shy. Um, Miss Husna is not uh, a mean teacher, a fierce teacher, or a strict teacher. No, no, still very shy. Okay, never mind. I'll get to know you guys tomorrow. Okay, we we do have another session tomorrow, so let's uh, move on to the next part. Okay, so next part. <clears throat> We're going to do a few more practice. Okay, a few more. Okay, I prepare for you four questions. And I would like you to try and do this as well. Okay, now these questions that uh, I have for you. Okay, question one and two. Okay, I'll show you question three and four also. Okay, question three and four. They don't look like the one that we did before. No, it's different. Okay, so this is more, this is this is the chart that I was talking about. This is a pie chart and this is just, uh, I would say, a notice. Okay, a notice or a leaflet. Okay, a leaflet about heartburn. And this is a recipe. I oh, know, sorry, this is a recipe, sorry. Question one is a recipe. And for B propolis, this is uh, an information, a notice, I would say. Okay. So let's try and attempt this together. Oh, hi. Uh, okay, you're from Chiras. Uh, what should I call you? Is it Ho? Kai? Kai Kai? Can I call you Kai Kai? Okay. Okay, I'm okay. starting to call people Kai Kai, like sweet, sweet, you know, sweet, sweet names, you know, sweet, sweet baby names. <laughs> okay, I think we're going to do something interesting. Eh? Okay, class, I would like you to think of one adjective. What is an adjective, teacher? Adjective is describing. Okay, it's a describing word. I would like you to take, um, to take the first letter of your name and I want you to find an adjective that is 
uh, also begin with the first letter of your name. So like, for example, my name is Husna. So I can say that I'm not boastful, but I can say I am humble Husna. Gitu. Okay, humble Husna. How about you? Let's try. Let's try and do that before we do this, you know, become very serious on this part. All right. So why don't we do that first? Okay, think of an adjective. Think of a word that describes you. Oh, no. Come on. There is something. Make sure it's related to your personality as well. So like here, I have Nurul Ain Izzati. Mm, you have Nurul Ain Izzati. So which one do you prefer? Is it A, Ain or Izzati I? Oh, so cute. So we have uh, Kain, Kai Jun. Okay, Ain. Ain? Okay, Ain? Okay. Yes, that is correct. Kai Xuan, Kain Kai Xuan. Okay, so after this, I'll be calling you Kain Kai Xuan. <laughs> talkative, I. No, Ain. Not talkative. Your name, your name begins with an A. So you have to find an adjective that begins with an A. Maybe... Um, adorable Ain. You like that? Adorable Ain. Okay, let me type that out in the chat. All right. So, adorable Ain. Oh, lama. Okay, she can come up with another another adjective. Okay, attractive Ain. Okay, active Ain. Wow, wow. Okay. Okay, so we have two competitors here. Eh? Kaishuan wants to win also. Huh, Kaishuan? Okay. How about the others? How about the others? How about, uh, we do have uh, Denise. How about Denise? Denise, how about you? How about Akila? You know? Uh, Ong, George, how about you? Hi. Hi. Yeah. Oh, wow. Daring Dennis. Now, now I feel intimidated. I feel quite scared now. Daring Denise. <laughs> okay. How about the rest? Come on. Like Suhada. What is it? Sweet Suhada? Okay. I'm going to remember this. Eh? Daring Denise. Um, attractive, I'm kind, Kai Shun. Okay, I'm going to remember you. All right. How about the rest? Come on. No? Can't think of any? <laughs> okay. Yes, it does sound like a uh, tongue twister. Okay. Oh, supportive Suhada. Okay. You you can be um you can be the shoulder to everybody. <laughs> oh wow, lavish, lavish. Wow, lavish. What's lavish? Anybody? Can you can you translate that for me? What's lavish? What's lavish? Hmm. Yes. Very good, Denise. Yes, it's rich, Levis. So is this Levis rich? Hmm. Is he single? I'm not single. No, it's not for me. No, no, no. It's not for me. Okay, it's not for me. I'm just asking. <laughs> okay. So yeah, anybody, any one of you would like to uh, matchy matchy with Levis? Levis. Okay, go right ahead. Not for me, eh? Okay. All right, so let's move on to our lesson today, class. Okay, before we go any further with this, okay, let's move on to this one. Okay, now question one, this extract is mainly about something. Okay, so now we know that it is actually uh, on seasoning ideas, seasoning ideas, nothing to do with season like winter, autumn, no. 
or in Malaysia, we have here rain every time, right? So no, nothing to do with those kind of seasons. Here, seasoning is where you put into your dishes, you put into your cooking, okay? So what are the seasoning that you can use? We often know salt and pepper, but you can also use a variety of spices too. Like you can use, here it says cumin. We have coriander, we have paprika. Maybe some of you are not, um, are not known to this type, but this is just, you know, to tell you briefly, you know, there are other spices as well. Like when you cook curry, right? When you cook curry, you need to have your cinnamon, right? You need to have your cloves, you need to have your, um, what's, what's that? What, what is that you call? Star anise, the bunga lawang, right? Bunga lawang, it looks like a flower, right? So we have those when we cook curry. And we do have curry leaves as well, right? So these are some of the, oh, what is cumin? Okay, Kajuan says, what is cumin? Cumin is uh, a type of spice. It's very tiny, very, very tiny. I would like to draw, but I'm not good at drawing. It's very tiny. It looks like something like that. And uh, it's brownish, grayish color. And if you bite into it, it's quite sweet. It's quite sweet. Is that the one in the kanduri rice as well? Uh, kanduri rice, yeah. The cinnamon, the star anise, the cloves, yeah. They are in that, um, what do you call that? Nasi minyak, right? Yeah. Anyone here? Anyone here um, planning to get married soon? Anybody? I hope not. I hope not, you're still too young. Okay, but if you do, please don't forget to invite me. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so here we do have uh, fresh herbs to stir fry. So, you know, add a few handfuls of fresh herbs to stir fries. You can add herbs uh, to stir fry. Sorry, stir fry salads and even sandwiches. What sort of herbs that you can put in? Okay, if you fancy some roasted chicken, you can roast your chicken with tarragon. You can roast your chicken with a uh, sage. You know, these are some of the herbs. If you have not known about this, this Google. Okay, Google is known as the World Wide Web. Oh, yes, but it's a library. It's the biggest library of all. Okay, so yes, you can cook your chicken, if you have a roasted chicken, you can cook with these kind of herbs. And if let's say you uh, you have a bland dish, now you can see this word here, bland, bland, right? Bland, this is bland, not blend, bland. So bland dish, this is um, tasteless, okay? Tasteless dish, you have no taste at all. So if you have a no taste dish, you can um, you can add it up to this Middle Eastern hot pot with plenty of cumin, coriander, and paprika. Okay, these three types of spices, and you can also experiment with unusual spices such as lemon, myrtle, or peri peri. Mm, this is Nando's. Okay, peri peri chicken and nanos. Okay, myrtle, myrtle, mm, myrtle, maybe, um, I don't know how to describe to you, but it's, it's kind of like a spice as well. Okay, so you can add on to any, um, to any of your cooking, maybe. I'm not sure whether Malaysia has this. Okay, but we do have lemon, we do have peri peri sauce. Okay, and you can also add a kick of chili to sauces, salad dressings, and marinades. Okay, Malaysians, we do love our food to be spicy, but it depends on the level of spiciness. Like, uh, I have this one friend, she can go up to level 10, like chili padi all in, 
uh, I don't understand oh, how and why. Okay, but we we love that. You know? we love our spiciness there in our food. Anyway, so this extract is mainly about. Is it about how to cook Western cuisine? Is it? Does it say anything about Western cuisine? Does it say? Okay. 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 I like spicy food. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. How to cook? Uh, how to cook Western cuisine? Does it say anything about Western cuisine? Any any word? Any keyword here? Western cuisine? Hmm. No. Definitely not. So we can cross this out. Yeah, can cross this out. Now, B, how to cook using different utensils. How to cook using different utensils. What is utensils? So we just try and highlight. Okay, we just try and highlight how to cook using, using utensils. Okay, so the, those are our keywords, using different utensils. What are utensils? Utensils are your your cooking um your cooking equipment. Is it a tool? I would say, right? Like your um <clears throat> what do you call that? Yeah, like your colander, like your wok, like your um like your spoon, your fork. These are all utensils, right? Does it say that? No, nothing to do with that. Are we talking about the utensils? No, definitely not. So we can cross this out. And definitely, now we know that the answer is C. Okay, so we know that the answer is C or this one. Okay, how to use spices to add flavors to your dishes. Okay, moving on to question number two. Okay, read this very quickly, read it very quickly. Okay, skim. Okay, when I say skim, it means read very quickly, yeah? Okay, so what is it about? <clears throat> so it's actually about the B propolis, right? It's actually about B propolis having a powerful antioxidant and antimicrobial properties. Okay, so that is about this uh, excerpt here or the, or the product information here. So let's read the question. Now, this product is a supplement best used to strengthen our immune system or is it to treat fungal infection or is it for food replacement? Hmm. Let's try and have a look. <clears throat> Okay, we'll try and hi um, highlight. We try and underline, strengthen our immune system to treat fungal infection or food replacement. Let's try and find it here. Okay, so B properly says powerful antioxidant and antimicrobial properties, making it naturally antibacterial, antifungal, and antiviral. So, this B properly is very good for you. All right, but good for what? Okay, B propolis resin is high in flavonoids, which are essential to our immune system. So you can see that is the keyword match immune system. Oh, we have two answers. One says B, and one says C. Okay, let's see. All right. So now we, we can we can see that there is a match immune system and oh, sorry to strengthen our immune system and here it says essential to our immune system. Now B to treat fungal infection. Hmm to treat fungal infection. Does it only treat fungal infection? Only fungal, only fungus kind of infection? Here it says, making it naturally antibacterial, antifungal, and antiviral. Three different ways, three different ways that it can be used. 
Okay, it has three different properties, antibacterial, antifungal, and antiviral. This one only says fungal infection. Hmm. So I don't think B is correct. Okay, so Kaishiran, so sorry. B is incorrect, dear. Okay, now let's go for C, for food replacement. So suggested usage, take one capsule daily with or without food, best when taken as directed by a qualified healthcare professional. So you need to seek healthcare professional first before you take this, all right? So here, take one capsule daily with or without food. This is suggested usage, suggested. So when you say suggested usage, it's entirely up to you the word suggest all right the word suggest here is entirely up to you okay it's just a suggestion okay it's not that it's uh, it's a forced thing where you need to take this brie propolis for you no it's not so it's not replacing your food at all it's not all right, so C is considered wrong too. And you can see here as well, it can be taken with or without food. So this is just a supplement, okay? It's just to add on to your uh, daily nutrients, okay? So C will be wrong, all right? And the best answer would be, the best answer would be A. All right. The best answer would be A, to strengthen our immune system. So all right, we already know that it has these uh, properties, uh, antibacterial, antifungal, and antiviral. And they are, there's one more keyword here. They are essential. They are essential to our immune system. So when you say essential, it's important for your immune system. So when it comes to the word importance or essential, or another synonym of it is strengthen. Okay, it has those kind of like powerful, uh, powerful uh, level of vocab, right? Essential importance so the synonym of it is strengthen all right so make sure you be careful with your keywords okay so now we know that the answer for two is a and for number one is c now let's move on to the next part okay so this is our home remedy to beat heartburn. Okay, read this very quickly. Question number three, read it very quickly. Okay, skim this very, very quickly. Okay, only, only number three. All right, so who can tell me what it is about? <clears throat> What it is about. You can guess that. You can guess that it's actually about here in the top. No, sorry, on the top here. Home remedy to beat heartburn. So, in another word, you can say that is to treat heartburn. Okay. So, when you have a heartburn, this is a remedy or uh, a medicine where you can uh, where you can stir it up at home okay whatever that you have at home you can try and uh, produce it uh, by yourself to treat heartburn okay I already told you the clue there okay to treat heartburn so um, read the question from this excerpt, we understand that heartburn refers to when you eat too much. Does it say that? Does it say, does it say, does it say that you eat too much? Okay, let's try and 
underline. Okay, sorry. Let me underline that nicely for you. Okay, when you eat too much or happens when you are having a heart attack. Hmm. Okay, having a heart attack. We can say this is the keyword. Okay, having a heart attack. Or C says, is an uncomfortable feeling that is related to indigestion. So we can take it um, as this, okay? An uncomfortable feeling related to indigestion. Okay, now let's try and have a look in the information here. So take an antacid, keep your head up while sleeping. Our antacid is just an, uh, a substance where you can uh, reduce your um, heartburn okay like we do have gaviscon okay gaviscon is considered an antacid okay keep your head up while sleeping have a glass of milk before bed loosen tight clothes or belt watch your diet avoid spicy food do not smoke slow down on soda okay soda in another and uh, this is an american term for but for british term we call it as the carbonated drinks Okay, so these are the uh, the way of how you can treat heartburn. But here, from this excerpt, we understand that heartburn refers to when you eat too much. Does it say anything about eating too much? Does it say that? <clears throat> no, definitely not right okay sorry okay sorry about that all right so it refers to when you eat too much no it only says uh, have a glass of milk before bed, loosen tight clothes, watch your diet, and avoid spicy food. Nothing to do with eating too much. So, we can say that this is wrong. Right? This is wrong. Uh, next one. B. Happens when you are having a heart attack. Huh? Where does it say that? Where does it say heart attack? Can you find it? No, there's nothing to do with heart attack here. So we crossed it out. Okay, and definitely yes. Okay, definitely the answer is C. Well done, well done. To those who got it correct, well done. Okay, so C is the correct answer. How, how do I know, teacher? How do I know? Hmm, how can you know? Okay, so when you have heartburn, how does it feel like when you have heartburn? What does it feel? I don't know what's heartburn, teacher. Oh, heartburn is where when when you eat when you eat a lot when you eat a lot, but it's on an empty stomach. Okay, it's on an empty stomach, and you eat like you know this thing spicy, this one like this one. You eat so much of food, and then you will get that feeling of either you want to burp and, and you can kind of feel like it's like a hot gas coming up or oh, going down no coming up <laughs> okay so it's uncomfortable you see right so it's uncomfortable for you so heartburn you can say that it's an uncomfortable feeling and it's related to indigestion all right so this is the answer C. Okay, move on to question number four. So this question is a chart, right? So this question is a chart. Okay, let's try and analyze this chart. All right. <clears throat> so you can see that this pie chart breaks down into four. Okay. So first one, now who would like to tell me the answer? We'll see. Who would like to tell me the answer straight away? 
What's number four? What's what's the answer for number four? <clears throat> Okay, I give you one minute to try and answer question number four without doing anything, without jotting down, without scribbling anything. Okay, now I got the answer. Okay, the answer is C. Okay, both of you, thank you for your answers. Okay, let's try and have a look. How did you get the answer C? Can you tell me, Kai Xuan? Kai Xuan, can you please tell me, how did you get the answer C? Can you try and speak to me? Can you try and speak to me? Hi. Hi. So, oh, yeah. Mm, because school and homework, she has uh, taken most of the percentage. Okay. That's what I just see. Okay. Okay. Did you just guess? Did you just guess or you actually try and, and look carefully? No, no. I look at the percentage. Okay, you look at the percentage. Okay, thank you. How about Sue? How about Sue? Sue? Sue Hada? Sue Hada, the supportive, supportive Sue Hada? The percentage. How did you get your answer C? You copy, yeah? Uh? Did you did you like copy each other? Are you sitting next to each other? Huh? Oh, I don't copy. Okay, so what is the uh? Why why did you answer C? Why? School and homework. School and homework. Why? Why? What's wrong with school and homework? What's wrong with it? Uh, the percentage. Okay. The higher. Oh, okay. Did you did you just guess only like okay? You think this is the highest, and that is the answer. Is that how you do it? No. Okay. Okay. Not very shy. Eh? Okay. Never mind. Okay. Good attempt. Okay, I know a lot of you will say, ah, oh, the highest, okay lah, just, in Malay, we say, just tembak, just tembak sahaja, no, we, we can try and tembak, sometimes it can be, it's possible, it's possible that you might get it correct, it's possible, but you have to really read the question and read the options given to you in order for you to score the best answer. Okay, it's not that we are picking the correct one. We are picking the, the, the most, the most, the most correct, the most correct and the best one. Okay, so which of the following statements is true? So the word highlighted here is true. All right. Oh, sorry, I put it in green. <clears throat> okay, let me change that to red. Okay, so it's true. So we gotta find out which statement is true here so we can see that lisa likes to sleep more than doing her homework she likes to sleep more more than doing homework more than homework okay next one b the smallest percentage on the chart is the music category the smallest percentage on the chart is music category okay we shall have a look at it in a while okay lisa is very occupied with school and homework daily is very occupied with school and homework daily so daily is every day 
So she is busy, occupied can also mean busy. So busy with school, busy with homework every day. All right. Now let's see. This pie chart shows the amount of time Lisa or Liza, however you want to uh, pronounce her name. Uh, I don't mind. Okay, so Lisa spends on her daily activities. So we now know that she is doing her daily activities and we now know that the amount of time she spends on her daily activities. So we can see that the, the percentage, the highest percentage would be 58% where she spent on school and homework. And we have 23% is spent on resting and sleeping. 10% is spent on her music and 9% is spent on personal things like bath, meals, tidying room and house. All right. So we have four figures here. We have four numbers. We have four uh, percentage. So we'll see. A says Le uh, Lisa likes to sleep more than doing her homework. Hmm. Sleep more than doing her homework. What's the percentage here? What's the percentage here? It's just. It's just twenty three percent right it's just 23 percent correct correct <clears throat> right she is only resting and sleeping only about 23 percent then doing her homework whereby doing her homework is 58 percent Okay, so I shall put that here. Okay, I hope that you can see. So 23% compared to 58%. You know, definitely the, uh, this answer is already wrong. Right? Homework is more. Homework is 58%. Homework is 58%. Right? So A is definitely wrong here move on to b the smallest percentage on the chart is the music category hmm the smallest percentage the smallest percentage is actually nine percent right nine percent so nine percent on the chart is actually spent on her personal things like bath meals tidying room and house is it in the music category? No, definitely not. Music category is how much? How many percent? How much? How many? How many percent? How, how many percent is it? Hmm? How many percent? Class? Music category? Music category? Berapa? How many? It's... It's just ten percent, right? It's just ten percent. So the music category is ten percent, but here it says the smallest percentage. So definitely, the answer for B is okay. Whoever whoever says B, I'm so sorry. Okay, B is wrong. All right. So B is wrong. B is considered incorrect, whereby the smallest percentage is this one here. It's this one. 9% is spent on personal things like bath, meals, and tidying room. Sorry, tidying room and house. Okay, so this is the smallest, whereby it's only 9%. So please be careful. That's why I keep on telling to try and look at it carefully, look at it clearly. Okay, open your eyes and see that... There is a difference here, 10 and a 9. There is one uh, difference, one percentage difference. Okay, so be careful. All right, sometimes your eyes can be a bit blurry. You know, ah, okay, I think uh, this one correct a B. No, you can't do that. All right, so we are left with C. 
So do we think that C is the correct answer? Yes, definitely C is the correct answer. How and why? <clears throat> Lisa is very occupied with school and homework daily. So what's the percentage here? School and homework daily. What's the percentage? It is the highest of all. The highest of all would be 58%. All right. So 58%. Sorry, it's in green. Okay, so 58%. All right. So she is very occupied, very busy with school, very busy with homework every single day. So 58%. So whoever got... Um, Got the answer just now? C, well done to you. Okay. Now, this is the last part of the questions. Okay. Um, is there any question that you would like to pose? Any questions? Any questions that you would like to pose? Because we are about to end the lesson. Okay, if you have any questions, please try and uh, post it up in the room chat or you can voice out your um, your questions. Okay, no? Okay, thank you, Ayn. Thank you. Attractive? Was it attractive, Ayn, or adorable, Ayn? Okay, I hope everybody is all clear on how to answer, on, on how to attempt on each of the questions. Okay, because I really hope also that you don't spend so much time in finding out the answers, especially. And please try to always uh, um, see the keywords. Okay, the keywords can be a little uh, confusing, but please. Okay, so here are my last tip okay here are my last tip okay just to remind you please do not randomly select an answer please do not do this why there is a possibility that you will get it wrong and this is just eight questions okay eight questions please try and at least get 90 percent correct so with the 90 percent correct it's considered seven out of eight so please do not make any mistakes. Please do not just tembak sahaja. Okay, please do not do that when you are selecting your answers. Do not just randomly. Although that you are given only three options, A, B and C, and you think that, uh, okay, I think uh, B, 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 okay, B. No, please don't do that. All right, and ask yourself, what is this question asking? Okay, so the aim of the question, you need to ask that, okay, what is it asking you to do? Is it to find uh, uh, the, the, the statement being true? Is it to find that, um, I don't know, uh, maybe the whole, uh, the whole excerpt, that, like just now that we did uh, on about the recipe, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, this one. So, what is this abstract is mainly about? All right. So it's asking you, what is it about? Mainly about. Specifically, what is it about? All right. So you got to find it out. What is it asking you? Okay. Then please do not try and skip any questions. Like I mentioned before, there are only eight questions, guys. Eight questions on part one. Please do not try and skip any because eight is considered a lot eight marks consider a lot for you so please try not to skip any questions if possible all right always check your answers always check the the uh, uh the options that you have chosen whether they are correct or not okay please try not to randomly choose as well if you don't have time okay and please do not waste time on only one single question if you miss out one oh, sorry if you skip one okay if you skip question one because you think that oh it's quite hard for me okay i skip this one okay what you can do okay when i was at school how do i do it i always take pencil okay pencil with me and i i <laughs> this is how i do it okay 
I will try and make a big circle. Okay, for example, oh, sorry, let's, let's, let's not try do it here. Okay, let's try and do it on the question. Okay, so for example, this is question three, right? So if I don't know the, the answer for this, and I'm going to skip and do question four. So I would try and do a big highlight. Okay, do a big highlight, something like this. Okay, so a big highlight. So then when you flip over your papers, right? When you flip over your papers and you say, oh, okay, I haven't done this one. Okay, then you can start and attempt this one. Okay, please do not try and skip and spend so much time on that one particular question because you still have four other parts that you need to do and they are crucial as well. They are very important as well for your paper one. So please do not waste your time on one single question. You got that? Okay, I hope you got that. Okay, like I said, 10 minutes for part one. 10 minutes only. That's not long. Part one. So the remaining time that you have is 80 minutes. 80 minutes. So that would be one hour and 20 minutes to go to do the four parts. All right. So please do not try and waste time on one particular question. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll end my class with a quote from Albert Einstein. Okay, so he says, uh, he says, he said, he, he already passed, okay. So Einstein said, anyone who has never, anyone who has never made a mistake has never tried anything new. Anyone who has never made a mistake has never tried anything new. So, what do you think he's trying to say here? What do you think he's trying to say here? Anybody? What do you think he's trying to say here? Hmm? Okay. Okay. I believe that uh, some of you are like, you know, still thinking of what, what is he trying to say? Okay. So what he's just trying to say is that it's okay to make a mistake. Okay. And some of you may think that you learn things from your mistakes, right? So it's okay to make mistakes because mistakes are actually colors to, to your life, you see. They create something new for you, right? So when you say that this is wrong, you don't have to believe that this is wrong or, or this is a mistake. You, know? it's, you learn from it. Okay, so always try to just believe in yourself. Okay, believe in yourself and believe that you are doing uh, the best for this part one. Okay, so it's okay to make mistakes. All right. Lastly, okay, any, uh, any questions that you would like to ask? Any questions? before we end the lesson if you do not have any questions uh if you do not have any questions now you can always uh jot it down somewhere write it down maybe on your in your notebook okay or in your uh in your notes or whatever okay and you keep it and you can ask me tomorrow morning okay so we can do the um, question and answer session tomorrow as well Okay, so for tomorrow, we will do on part two, rational close. And uh, I hope that you are prepared for it. Okay, please try and have a read at any reading comprehension or try and, and, um, and uh, revise on certain questions on rational clothes and maybe you can try and ask me uh, during the session tomorrow as well okay so i hope that you had uh, a comprehensive lesson with me today and 
I hope that you learned something from me too. Okay. And uh, I wish you um, to stay healthy and to stay safe at all times. All right. Assalamualaikum. And thank you very much, everybody. See you tomorrow. Have a nice day.